Hello everyone, I am Preetam Nagaraj. Today, I am presenting our work Mindfulness-Based Embodied Tangible Interactions for Stroke Rehabilitation at Home. I carried out this research as an MSc student at UCL London, along with the support of PhD student Van Mo and Professor Catherine Holloway. Today, I will be talking about these sections in the order shown. Let's get started. It all started with the motivation to explore novel ways to address stroke rehabilitation challenges. Tactile sensations play a key role in designing technologies for stroke rehab that, combined with my passion towards mindfulness, brought us to this idea. So, there is mindfulness on one side and there are tangible interactions that are associated with tactile sensations on the other side. And finally, there is stroke rehabilitation. Our curiosity to understand the confluence of these three was our motivation to begin with. We started off with these research questions. First, what roles do mindfulness and tactile sensations play in addressing stroke rehabilitation challenges at home? And second, how can we combine mindfulness and tactile sensations in designing an embodied tangible technology for home-based stroke rehabilitation? Having these questions as the central idea, we set out to explore what is possible. We'll briefly talk about the literature review we did to help us lay a foundation to our work and also understand what others have already explored. We looked for the previous works in these four categories. The literature review led us to an understanding that there has been a gap in the literature where there is a lack of unified approach that embodies aspects of mindfulness with tangible technology, specifically addressing stroke rehabilitation. I will briefly explain the methodology we followed. For this study, we decided to involve experts in the fields of physiotherapy as well as mindfulness who had experience working closely with stroke survivors. The reason for choosing them is mainly because at this stage of the study, we first wanted to get empirical support for the possibility of our idea before working directly with vulnerable groups. Also, the literature showed success in this approach in the past. There were a total of eight participants who were experts in their respective fields, like you can see in this table. We conducted the study in two phases. In the first phase, we did semi-structured interviews uh, with these different categories of users. For physiotherapists, we tried to understand their general experience working with stroke survivors through the rehabilitation. And for mindfulness experts, we tried to explore their experience and knowledge of mindfulness practices, the intricacies involved and the technologies associated with it. Based on the insights from phase one, we did asynchronous co-design sessions with participants where we let them ideate potential ideas for MBETI technologies based on their experience and understanding in the respective fields. During the co-design session, we used visual probes to provide context to users before they dive deep into the ideation exercise. Here, you can see the four sources of visual probes we presented. We gave a bespoke explanation of these probes by explaining aspects that are less familiar to the participants. For example, for physiotherapists, we focused on explaining how mindfulness was embodied in these technologies. And for mindfulness experts, we explain nuances of stroke rehabilitation and how technology can be designed for it. In this image, you can see the summary of participant sketches after the ideation exercise during the co-design. You can see different ideas showing how MBETI technologies can be designed to answer our research questions. I will not go deep into these ideas since we will touch upon some of them later. So after all those activities, let's see what we found out. We did a systematic thematic analysis which finally led us to five final themes. In this diagram, you can see the interconnections between these themes and also two of these themes having sub-themes. In the next slides, we will go into the details of each of these themes. 
The first theme is Navigating Psychophysical Challenges. This theme arises from the participant accounts, mainly talking about the challenges during rehab. The challenges are around physical pain, motivation lapses, distractions, boredom, etc. However, the main point of this theme is that despite a seemingly wide spectrum of these challenges, they are all still very much within either psychological or physical domains. We start to observe a clear pattern here. The second theme is successful rehabilitation harnesses positive mind-body connection. This theme talks about how all participants stressed that a positive mind-body connection was a key factor to successful rehabilitation. While talking about the mind-body connection, two sub-themes emerge. The biological perspective sub-theme is where participants talk about concepts like reflex arc, which is related to cyclic connection between the brain and the body sensations. The psychological perspective is a sub-theme that explains how participants uh, you know, talked about staying positive and how that mindset led to progress and recovery. Together, this theme talks about the importance of mind-body connection and rehabilitation. The next theme is being mindful enhances rehabilitation performance. This theme highlights the key role of mindfulness during rehabilitation and how participants attested to it. They talked about real life instances where being mindful has helped individuals during recovery. They also talk about mindfulness activities such as meditation, improving reflex arc, etc. The key takeaway from this theme is about the key role played by mindfulness in directly enhancing rehab performance. And this is evidenced by participant accounts. <clears throat> this theme, the uh, awareness, which is the essence of mindfulness, is one of the key themes of our findings. This theme delves deep into the concept of mindfulness based on empirical participant accounts and presents it from a fresh perspective specific to this context. Here, awareness emerges as a primary focal point. Across the three sub-themes, we see how participants have talked about the pivotal role of awareness and how it is linked to mindfulness. The first sub-theme explains how participants talk about being mindful during activities of daily living. The second one is about being aware during interactions with the surroundings. And the third sub-theme is about how mindful awareness is not only about doing something, but also being in it as a state of mind. You know, through this theme and its sub-themes, we get a chance to explore and understand different facets of mindfulness based on empirical data. The final and the most important theme is tactile sensations as a pathway to mindfulness. This is one of the most profound discoveries for us as part of this research, where participant accounts touched upon the connection between tactile sensations and mindful awareness. This theme talks about how participants emphasized awareness of tactile sensations as being directly linked to the thoughts in their mind and how they are all interconnected. The connection between thoughts and sensations is a foundation of mindfulness. This is what makes this theme really interesting. Rooted in the findings of the study, MBETI as a concept represents a groundbreaking approach that blends mindfulness and embodied tangible technology. These design principles are firmly grounded in real world experiences and perspectives of participants. Through these principles, we're trying to explain those key things that practitioners design practitioners might want to keep in mind when designing stroke rehabilitation technologies based on MBETI. First, design for comfort. When designing stroke rehab technologies, comfort plays a key role. Our participants constantly spoke about how both physical and mental comforts are very important for recovery. Any new technology can be daunting for users at first. Therefore, under this principle, the goal would be to embrace familiarity in designing new technologies. We can design something that the users are familiar with. In this case, uh, using everyday items available at home can bring that sense of comfort during rehab. Also, 
offering customizations to suit user needs can go a long way. Designed to promote practice and motivation. Particularly in home-based rehabilitation, maintaining constant motivation over a prolonged period of time like months and years was seen as a significant challenge. Therefore, this design principle urges design practitioners to inculcate elements such as gamification or rewards, which might help in promoting practice and provide the much needed motivation to users. Design to support mindful awareness. This is one of the key principles where mindful awareness comes into the picture. Here, what we mean by designing mind for mindful awareness is simply paying more attention to incorporating sensory feedback and cues, which are essential parts of any stroke rehabilitation exercises. When these elements are infused into technology, based on our findings, they might naturally promote mindful awareness, which would in turn help in recovery. Another key design principle would be to design to highlight the interplay of thoughts and sensations. While this might sound a little bit complex, our findings talk in depth about how thoughts and sensations are interlinked. Through this design principle, we aim to harness this interplay by designing technologies that encourage users to be more aware of their thoughts as well as sensations through multi-sensory engagement. Design to foster progress tracking. The MBETI design should include mechanisms for users to monitor the rehabilitation as it advances. By offering things like tracking visualizations, milestones, etc., we can enhance user motivation and improve the overall user experience. So this is the part where we talk about so what? The biggest contributions of this work is pioneering the concept of mindfulness-based embodied tangible interactions or MBTI as we call it. Our findings converge into a meta abstraction that seemingly you know, embody mindfulness and tactile sensations into the design of stroke rehabilitation technology. Using this approach, we can imagine examples of potential MBTI-based technologies for stroke rehab inspired by the participant ideas from the co-design session, such as the Mindful Rehabilitation Ball, Tactile Game Board, and Mindful Rehabilitation Glove. These devices could be equipped with, uh, you know, uh, to emit vibrotactile sensations and have embedded sensors to measure movements specifically tailored for bimanual, you know, upper limb rehabilitation exercises. These devices seamlessly also incorporate the design principles we just discussed and serve as a guide for future designs embodying my MBETI design principles. Our work was not without its challenges. Initially, we had planned this as a three-phase study, but due to constraints in ethics approval and timelines, we had to restrict it to two phases. Another challenge uh, you know, included conducting asynchronous co-design sessions and you know, highly restricted participants, which impacts generalizability of the results. Finally, we want to touch, touch upon what we envision as a future for our work. As the next step, we want to refine the concept of MBETI through iterative design, leading to some tangible concepts and prototypes that we can work with. Then we can conduct a comprehensive user study involving stroke survivors to complement and validate the findings from experts. After this, we want to complete the truncated third phase by involving stroke survivors as part of the study and obtaining the feedback of the, design, of the concept designed. We hope that our work holds the promise of a future where rehabilitation transcends obstacles of current approaches and empowers stroke survivors. Well, thank you for listening. We encourage you to read our full paper and feel free to reach out to us through our emails to learn more about our work. We are also happy to take any questions you might have right now. Thank you.